Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? I'm well, thank you. Hello, friends. All right, so the question today is about the heart. This little phrase people throw around, I'm going to guard my heart. What, what does that mean, to guard your heart? Yeah, well, it comes out of Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart, for from it flow the wellsprings of life. Uh, you ought to guard your heart because the heart is where, uh, in, in scripturally, where the thoughts, the seat of, of man. And we always tell people, you don't want to follow your heart. You want to inform your heart. And you don't want to have your heart conformed or your mind conformed to the ways of the world because uh, that might seem good to you, but it's going to lead to what the scripture would define as death, I think, apart from God's will and way. And so you want to make sure you don't uh, live according to your own understanding, right? But in all your ways, acknowledge him that he might make your path straight. So guarding your heart would be guard your, guarding your heart from anything that's going to pull you away from the will and the way of God because it's going to lead to death, all right? So when Jesus was talking in Mark chapter 7, you know, to the Pharisees who were giving him a, um, a bit of a hard time, he, he called the crowd that says to him in verse 14, and he said, listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside the man which can defile him if it goes into him, but the things which proceed out of the man are what defile the man. Skipping down a little bit, he says this, verse 20, that which proceeds out of the man, that's what defiles the man, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things proceed from within and defile the man. Um, you know, I think what we've got to understand, Rick, is that our hearts are bent towards evil, right? The heart is desperately sick, it says in Jeremiah 17, and deceitful above all else. In other words, it sometimes tells us that life is going to be over here when God's will and way is saying, no, that's a way that seems right to you, but again, it's the way that ends in death. And so you got to be really careful what feeds your heart, what feeds your mind. Um, the scripture says, do not be deceived in 1 Corinthians 15, for bad company corrupts good morals. The companion of fools, Proverbs 13, will suffer harm. And so you've got to make sure that those that are speaking to you, where your where your who your playmates are, where your playground is, you know, what what kind of things you're meditating on, if it's not true and right and honorable and pure and lovely, if it's not uh, excellent and worthy of praise, then it's going to cause you trouble, okay? And so how do you guard your heart? would be to make sure that you are informing your heart with word, the Word of God. That's where Romans 12, 2 comes back in, right? Where it says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed. And it says there, by the renewing of your mind, okay? Which again, uh, the, the, the seat of emotions, the seat of a person is often in Scripture called the heart, all right? And how we think, right? How a man thinks, so is he. So, you know, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 5. It just says part of the way we're not going to be sucked into air and trouble is, is we're going to destroy speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So we've got to guard our heart. We've got to make sure that our heart uh, is not something that we follow, but it is something that uh, that we train. Okay? Um, you hear us talk about, and we've done another Real Truth real quick, I think, that uh, deals with this topic. Uh, you know, when we, we talk about how feelings are real, but they're not reliable, okay? And so if your heart is pulling you away from the things that the faith tells you you should study, okay, Psalm 119, verse 9, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to his commandments. Verse 11, same chapter, thy word I have hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against you, okay? So, uh, guard your heart. And how do you do it? By not walking in the counsel of the wicked, standing in the path of the sinner, sitting in the seat of scoffers, but uh, delighting yourself in the law of the Lord, Psalm 1 says. And on that law, meditate day and night. You want to take care of your heart because it is the garden in which you sow into that will cause you to bear fruit that leads to death or a life that leads to what the scripture would define as blessing. Hey, so that's good stuff. So one area where you hear this phrase a lot is in the context of dating relationships. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that? Okay, yeah, I'll do it quickly just because of, you know, keep it tight. But uh, I would just say that, again, when, who you date, okay, it's a part of who your companions are. And, uh, you know, if you date a fool, it's going to be a problem. If there's some foolish guy 
that just wants to validate himself, if you will, talking about a guy, a girl, uh, validate himself by getting girls to like him. A girl would be wise to guard her heart and not let that fool uh, kind of reel her in, okay? She's also got to watch her heart that she has never believed that some man can complete her in the sense that she's never going to need anything again. Uh, what I always tell my little girls is that they should never buy the lie that anything or anyone other than Jesus Christ can satisfy them. So when their heart starts to say, if that guy liked me and validated me, my life would be great, that would be a problem. She needs to guard her heart against that lie, okay? Uh, or she needs to guard her heart against guys that are not really uh, concerned about appropriately wooing her towards a relationship that he has intentions with, but if he's trying to just say, hey, I just want to see if I can get you to like me and then move on, guard your heart against those kind of fools. So bottom line, have your needs met in Christ, guard your heart with the lie that anyone or anything other than Christ can satisfy you, and uh, stay in the Word and then enjoy relationships with the people who know that we're here to bless each other, not to use each other. Good stuff. Thanks, Todd. Hey, listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, right above me right now, it'll say subscribe to our channel. You can click that button, subscribe to get our videos every week. Uh, email to you. And also, check out our, our uh, YouTube channel. We have over 100 videos there for you to check out and watch some of those uh, past episodes. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.